So I'm going to start by saying that this is definitely not going to be one of my more polished videos. I'm trying to come up with a video that reflects the most accurate and up-to-date information on what's happening with the coronavirus and Canada's response to it. So what happened before was I actually recorded a nice little package polished video at the beginning um, of the week. And given the current news cycle with the high velocity and the fact that everything's turning over very quickly, I just had to re-record and I think everybody else is in this position. So I don't have the capacity or the scheduling power to be able to quickly turn over a polished piece. So I have no mic set up. I have no desk. Uh, I'm standing. I'm in a very active position. So I feel pretty good about what I'm saying. Um, and this is just how th this video will go. So, um, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I've got, I've got my notes right here. So let's, uh, let's get this updated. It's no surprise that there's a lot going on right now. As of the date that I'm recording this, March 27th, 2020, there are over 4,000 cases in Canada, which isn't a, a lot compared to other countries. However, it is a huge jump in March alone. Let me get into some more specifics about what happened over the course of the week. The Trudeau government announced that there'd be a $2,000 monthly benefit. This uh, applies for workers that are who have recently lost their jobs due to coronavirus, are sick or quarantined, or are taking care of someone who is sick or quarantined. Uh, parents caring for their children due to school being now cancelled and closed off, as well as people who are self-employed or contract workers who are not eligible for the EI benefits. The portal for this benefit, uh, the Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit, will be strictly online. It hasn't quite launched yet, and this is very important to say because there is a text scam going around saying you've, you have, you're entitled to this amount of money, just click on this link. That is a malware link, it will actually infect your mobile phone with some sort of malicious code. So be ascertained that uh, if you are getting a benefit or you are applying for a bene benefit, it will be strictly done through the Canadian website on the uh, federal uh, online portal that has yet to launch as of uh, my time recording this. And it's really awful that people are continuing to try to profit off of the COVID scam, whether it's just people buying and price gouging uh, common essentials. So you had that story in Vancouver of that guy buying Lysol wipes just to create a product scarcity and then resell it at a very inflated price saying he's just running a business. But, you know, there's a lot of scummy people and I think um, crises like this really highlight who these people are. Uh, so be careful of the tech scam. Don't pay more than don't pay thirty dollars for a case uh, or one single roll of uh, Lysol wipes like that one Ontario retail place that shan't be named because by now you already know who it is. Um, I believe it was Pusateri, so I guess I'll just name it. <laughs> There's no shortage of footage of EI benefit claimants just lining around the block of every Service Canada. Uh, location which really shows and highlights this desperation and this mounting number of job losses and people in financially unstable circumstances and it's really unfortunate that um, not only with these mounting job losses the last figure I saw a few days ago was around 929,000 so just shy of a million people trying to apply for EI by, as of the date that I'm recording this, I'm sure we're way past a million, or we're just past a million at this point. I've heard figures saying that they're expecting that these claimants will actually surpass two million. So that's, it's an ongoing process and then there's still more numbers to be reported. It's, um, it's, a, it's a much bigger problem and it's expected to get, to get much bigger than this. I also heard some figures from the Bank of Canada forecast that was expecting the unemployment rate to reach 15%. That's insane and unprecedented. These figures go beyond unprecedented. These figures are unimaginable. That's the word we should be using right now. Just unimaginable. Even if you're the biggest market bear and you foresaw some form of recession, there was no way anybody could could have predicted something of this severity. Even myself, I had a feeling that there would be some sort of economic contraction, but I never expected something to this grandiose scale of negative news and rising figures and just 
bad, just a constant stream of problems that's facing not only Canada, but the global, the global economy, global healthcare, every aspect of regular life that we took for granted is now being aggressively confronted with this very real problem. So this morning, as I'm recording this, Trudeau actually announced a 75% wage subsidy for small and medium-sized businesses. The aim here is that we're, he's hoping, and we're all hoping, that uh, this will actually stem the amount of layoffs happening. Additionally, there will be GST and HST deferments till, the, till at least the end of June, I believe, or the beginning of June of 2020. So it's hoping to stem layoffs and hoping that uh, companies will actually rehire the workers that they've recently laid off. Oh, and I can't believe I almost forgot to mention that the Bank of Canada cut interest rates overnight. Uh, so I believe over the 26th into the 27th. Uh, so everybody woke up to a sudden emergency rate cut. Now we're at standing at 20, or, sorry, 0.25%. Let me get this right. 0.25%. The last time we saw that rate go down that low was during the 2009 global recession. Now, how much uh, consumers will actually be able to benefit from this low interest rate is still up for debate. This is mostly to stimulate the economy from a corporate and business lending perspective and also a sovereign lending perspective. Speaking of consumers, there are measures announced this week for homeowners and renters. Now, announced late last week, or I believe early this week, the timelines are a little skewed because everything's happening so quickly. I believe it was the 18th of March. Uh, homeowners were supposed to be allowed to defer their mortgage payments. Now, this is something that uh, Bill Morneau actually tried to encourage the big five banks to work out with different mortgage lenders that they're working with. The problem is, with the CBC report now, just a more widely reported issue, is that it's actually very difficult for mortgage lenders to actually qualify for this uh, mortgage deferment. And if you're a landlord with a secondary residence that you're renting out to a, to a renter, this does not qualify for you. It is only for primary residences. The problem with this is renters, uh, most provinces have frozen evictions, which is great. That's really important for renters. They're at least going to be able to keep a roof over their heads when their incomes are very aggressively interrupted. However, if landlords are still expected to make those mortgage payments and they're not and there's a chance that they're not going to get that income come April 1st, then that puts landlords in a very tight financial position. So to reiterate, across most provinces, there is an eviction freeze, and many people are calling for a rent freeze right now as renters are scrambling to come up with uh, the rent for April 1st. So it will be interesting to see how things develop next month uh, because everybody's... Uh, there's mounting tensions about how people are going to pay their bills despite all of these measures to help people try to try to keep their income consistent at this time despite the announced measures for two thousand dollars every month for as an ei benefit or as an additional benefit there is a huge issue of people actually trying to access these resources so I've heard of websites crashing, I've heard of phone lines being overwhelmed, and even more recently I've heard that Service Canada offices are closing across the country because workers are just too... they're too afraid to go to work because they are afraid of the risk of coronavirus. It's a very public-facing job. I completely understand the, the fear and the anxiety around actually facing the public when everybody tells you to stay at home because that is the way to protect yourself. That said, this is putting a lot of risk on... That said, there's a lot of Canadians who need this funding now, so there's got to be some sort of way to make sure that Canadians are being taken care of with these benefits. So, announcing these measures and then not having the means to actually get these resources to them is just as detrimental as not having these measures at all. And here's a bit of a change of pace. Um, I'm a freelance reporter. I'm a journalist that, uh, like like many of my colleagues at this time, is work. We're working around the clock to try to cover every new development of COVID-19, and it's it's constant. It's when I say I'm working around the clock, I mean it's literal. It's night shifts, day shifts, working for different publications, trying to it just also just getting the news out through social media trying to keep ahead of everything and uh, it's it's exhausting. Um, 
not to say that, like, I, I can't stand here and complain. The healthcare workers are obviously going through the most amount of strain and the most amount of, and they are the biggest heroes in this whole situation and this whole year really this i mean they're just the heroes of the year uh they're the heroes of every year but i mean like now especially uh but um with the media i think it bears mentioning that we're confronted with these mounting death toll numbers we're confronted with these really heart-wrenching stories of pain and loss and despair and it uh, and just hearing the stories of financial anxieties from Canadians who are just at the end of the rope and they're exhausted and everybody's just so tired right now and it really bears down on you. It bears down on everybody. And the recommendation that a lot of psychiatrists or mental health professionals give to people who are anxious about COVID-19 is take a break from the news cycle, take a break from social media, take a break from just overwhelming yourself with this information but if you're a journalist or you're in the news media you don't really have that option you have to marinate in those stories and you have to get right in the trenches with that uh, because people are counting on you to give this news to them and to provide that constant stream of information so that they know how to prevent the spread of covid they know how to they know what the numbers are they know uh, what their options are if they are impacted by the effects of the coronavirus and we need to report on the heroes that actually give us all hope. Another thing I mentioned, I know I talk about the retail, the whole retail industry a lot and retail workers. I am so glad that retail workers are finally getting the credit that they are due. All it took was a pandemic apparently, but I'm really glad that they're getting more respect, they're getting higher pay, and I hate that they're being put at a greater amount of risk, but it's a very underappreciated job, and I hope that moving forward, once we get past this, if we're in the clear, people will remember the work of frontline retail workers. I used to work retail. Um, it's It can be a challenge on a regular day, but I can't even imagine what working retail right now would look like. It's a dark time and I know everybody's exhausted and uh, people are still debating whether this is going to last weeks, whether it's going to last months. Um, everybody's just slammed right now, but I think if we take this day by day, we stay inside, we take those preventative measures, really defer to the medical authorities and um, other authorities in these matters, we can actually come together and beat this and come through a lot stronger than before. And as a well-respected journalist once said in trying times or consistently said in trying times, good night and good luck. There was also a Bank of Canada forecast that uh, said that they were expecting a... Doggles.